right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here, the Star Ladder iLeague Star Series American Qualifying Action coming at you. Digital Chaos versus Ten Complexity Gaming here in this two game series. And right now, DC, of course, DC's up one game to nothing in this series. Although, again, I got to say, I mean, Complexity definitely had hope there. They really had hope there in that first game. Uh, I was looking at points that they could have started pulling through, but that bottom push, man, move went a little too deep on Timbersaw. And before Ten you know it, uh, things aren't going too well. And then DC kind of just turned it on from there. So Five seconds, uh, I'm drawn by Trauf, by the way. Trauf, uh, is there really much else to it uh, the, the, about that game, if you think? Or? The sack. Uh, I just think some really good setups for movement. You can hear me, by the way, right? I can hear you, and it looks like the stream should be able to. Okay, this should be good. Okay. Hopefully. DC's yeah. <laughs> Skype sucks. I'm just going to say that much. Um, yeah, no, I think Moon just had some not only fast reactions, but just uh, good item build, good setup. Uh, it was a little interesting to see the Helm of the Dominator first, but uh, really the bread and butter of the hero was Blink RP, right? I mean, and that's what really happened. You use the Lotharis to help set up and maneuver yourself around so that they can't see you and they can't see it coming. That's why I thought the last fight in particular was, was a little peculiar because... I mean, they, they they knew he was there because he was sitting there attacking a, a Morphling Replicant for a good, I want to say two seconds. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit longer, I don't remember. But they knew he was there, and they just let it happen. Um, it's also, in general, that area, those little closed quarters, like like around there, maybe around the other one, around Dyer's Sanctuary, slash Shrine, whatever you want to call it, or around Roshan, whatever it may be. Whenever there's closed quarters, heroes like Darkseer and Magnus um, that have those the kind of AoE old things that suck you up. Um, that's where they really thrive, and they just probably shouldn't have taken a fight there to begin with. But they were worried about Roshan being killed, they were worried about their shrine being killed, which would mean that they'd have more difficult access to Roshan. So I understand the like the urgency of protecting that shrine. It was just a very fortunate spot to be fighting for DC around that Magnus. Yeah. So Digital Chaos ultimately just making the better decisions, leading them to victory, and here we are now in Game 2 again, up one nothing. But Complexity definitely has fighted them, so we'll see how they do in this one here. And Interesting start to this one. I say that because Leshrac, again, there's there's really one team, I think, that you could argue out there that Leshrac is a worthy bandit against right now, and Complexity, they've proven time and time that they play it well, and uh, it was banned the first game, if I'm not mistaken, so they're going to let it go through this time, though. They do go Underlord Shadow Demon in response, however, so... You think it could be a problem for DC letting uh, letting them have the less rack? Um, we'll see. I mean, they. I know that Cole loves DC's to pick this less rack. He's just picking bad. it up for. I mean, the last time I remember casting them, I think was with you actually, and we saw them pick up a less rack really, really early. And I remember us saying like, "Wow, this is pretty bold." Um, picking up a less rack. I think it was a five position. How are they gonna? Ten they had no setup stuns or anything like that, but. They proved us wrong, and they actually took Five over that game. Remaining. And Leshrac was a, a huge staple of their success in that game. So I can't even I can't say right now at this point like, oh man, that's just not going to work out for them because they they seem to run it well and they seem to be comfortable with the hero. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there I think a lot of teams have seen Complexity run Leshrac a bit more. Um, I'm pretty sure Melons down. will play this right. Like I mean, you could play it core, but I'm pretty sure Melons plays it for the for the most oh, part. Yeah, I, they, they throw it around a little bit, but yeah, Melons is usually their less rack player. It's safe to say. So. Okay. Third pick for DC. You see the bands to come. Timbersaw and Sand King taken away by DC. You got Marana as Ten well as Luna remaining. taken away by Complexity, of course. They don't want to give up that Luna Shadow Demon Five yet again, remaining. so they'll gladly uh, ban that option. Now, we saw Terrorblade last game when they happen to go to Shadow Demon, so I wonder if Digital Chaos may go that route now, knowing yeah. that he's not banned. They very well could. They very well could. Rubik's actually not too bad against Terrorblade, um, in the sense that his when they start to push and group up all those illusions, your Fade Bolt does pretty good damage. It's been buffed by like 30 damage, I think, so now the max is 320. I think it used to be 280, and the damage reduction, I think, up buffed just a little bit as well. So in that sense, Rubik's kind of good against... Um, Terrorblade. Also, when you start to like converge onto a Terrorblade in the middle of a team fight, that lift, if you time it perfectly, and it's not hard to, is a very good way to stifle that uh, that Sunder usage. Um, but then again, I mean, Shadow Demon, Terrorblade, very, very strong combo. You have the Underlord to kind of be a frontliner for you, give you a mech, give you a, 
a pipe if you need one, yeah. which they will because they're up against Leshrac and Rubik. Oh, yeah. And we haven't even seen their three other picks. Oh, yeah. Pretty important item to have just against those two alone. They also go Invoker, so we're going to see a Wii Invoker most likely. Played in that uh, middle lane here. And now Complexity going to have to figure out how they maybe want to respond to that. But, yeah, going with the really two supports with their first couple of picks, uh, that's what we expect at least. Now, Leshrac, again, as we pointed out, I mean, it could potentially switch up uh, depending how the game, the Ten draft seconds, finishes remaining. here, but you figure off the bat they're looking to lean towards more of the support option. Five so we'll still need a mid. Remaining. I will say DC actually, uh, I forget who it was against. It was earlier in this tournament. They Result actually ran Leshrac mid themselves. We actually played Leshrac. Um, it was against, you know, it was against NP. That's what it was. It was the first series against okay. them. And they pushed down towers like crazy. Oh, but Pudge. DC okay, real quickly, I I, I, yeah. I got to hang out with Complexity, you know, a bit at the Boston Major especially, and just in general. Obviously, I'm a fan of the team and the players on it and stuff. Um, some inside scoop, maybe. Uh, Monkeys was talking about how uh, he really likes Pudge, and he considers himself a very, very good Pudge player. I'm thinking okay. we're going to see some Monkeys Pudge here. Five seconds That's remaining. my guess. Well, I called a morph last game, so let's see if you're right on this, on this Monkeys Result Pudge. Time. I agree with you. I think I think it probably is going to be off lane just because I don't think I think Melons is going to be on the Lesh track. And if that's a dual support of Rubik Lesh, where else would you put the Pudge? I don't think it's going to go mid. Um, so off lane would make the most sense. I think they're going to go some kind of acro dual or sorry acro tri lane with like Pudge Rubik Lesh track. Maybe put Pudge up there, hide the Lesh track and Rubik supports on the side, smoke up or something, and go for a level one bloodlust or sorry level one uh, uh, first blood. And uh, so if that's the case, expect to see something like a Weaver come out for the safe lane. Um, someone that can hold his own in that short in that short lane. Um, that, that could also just be maybe they're maybe they won't do that. Maybe they'll just do dual lanes and have Rubik plus one. Yeah. But just watch out for that. So also, I think Weaver just is a decent hero in general. Uh, that being said, there is a Kunkka. I was almost going to mention the fact that, oh, they banned out the Marana for the Shadow Demon. Now we got Kunkka to watch out for and they did pick the Kunkka. Yeah. So. Taking a page out of, I think it was Infamous's book. Uh, was it Infamous or Dow? Who did that earlier? One of those today. two teams, yeah. <laughs> I forget who uh, of the two, but in that earlier Breaky's series. just like, ah, oh, they're both Peruvian. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> Reserve time. I'm joking. Okay, so yeah, they do get the cut. Obviously, that, that combination has been around for a while. It died off for a fair amount there. Kunkka, in general, really hasn't been a popular hero, but again, we've seen some glimpses of it here and there. You know, you know a hero that's, I don't know if it's going to fit this game necessarily, but again, watching some of the European hmm. action, Team Liquid specifically, they've been running a lot of Necro, and Necro's kind of been a popular ah. hero this patch, yet we do not see Necro at all, I feel like. so. Right. Maybe here? I mean, yeah, maybe it, not here, but why not, you think? Well, um, the only weary thing... Are you talking about for complexity? Well, I, I'm not even guessing we're going to use it Or here. just in general. Just in general, yeah. Just kind of thought about yeah, it. Yeah, well, in, in general, I think it's a very strong Clinks. hero. The term is here. Okay, Clinks is a DC very good hero for the safe lane bad. in terms of you can kind of leave him there. So if they did want to go for some kind of aggro tri lane, it, it would be quite fine. Um... I'll tell you though, Underlord, that damage reduction, even with Clinks hitting with fiery arrows or searing arrows, is, I'm interested to see how that matchup goes. I haven't Ten seen it personally. Remaining. I wonder if it's enough to help Underlord hold his own, or Five if the the remaining. match or the damage from the uh, searing arrows is just too much. Hmm. That'll be interesting for Reserve me. But time. back to your Necro point, yeah, it's a very strong hero. Uh, complexity could take it, but since Underlord's most likely going to go for a pipe, it's going to mitigate a lot of that damage. Um, you have the rum to, to work with. Um, yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, it is a very strong hero for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I do find it interesting, though. Again, he's, he's kind of – feel. I feel like he's considered more of a just a pub stomp hero in general. Uh, but, like Five I said, Liquid has been using it lately and doing very well with it. I think Ad Finum even used it a couple of days ago uh, in their debut series, and they won their he's match with time. it. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if maybe he gets more attention. You know, I'm – I don't know if I'm sold on the Pudge offlane thing. Maybe it will be just because Monkey says he is comfortable with it, but I feel like it sounds crazy, but I really feel like it might be stronger just to have like an offlaner here. And they're actually banning out Abaddon, so I don't think that they expect that. To, I think it's going to be a less. I think it could be a less rack mid actually, and Rubik like for Melons, and then Pudge uh, for Z Freak. I know Z Freak also plays a mean Pudge. He's a very, very oh, yeah. good Pudge player. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this be some kind of offlane here, like maybe like 
a Dark Seer. Dark Seer is good with Pudge. Um, that's if they go the route of Pudge as a four, which I I'm actually leaning towards. I think given the situation <coughs> and given the draft, it might be a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. I think Misery agrees too because that. Otherwise, I don't know if that uh, the Abaddon ban makes much sense. Although I have seen Abaddon mid before. That was with the Chinese team a long time ago. And I think the old C deck used to do it. Very, very old okay. with, um, what was this name? Inflame. Oh, that was like two years ago. But I haven't seen it since. So. Yeah, this final pick really is going to be something here Ten for complexity. It's remaining. hopefully going to give us a better idea. I mean, they're going to have to choose quickly now in terms of Five what they want. So remaining. here we go. See what they finish with. Okay. Oh, it is going to be off lane, Pudge. Okay, so Shadow Fiend mid. To pick. Breaky was right. I was left. <laughs> it could be. An, you, I will. Now, they have ran a little bit of off lane Leshrac before as well. That, that was back when Moo was playing the off lane. I don't know if that's something that they would still potentially do, but. Ten seconds yeah. remaining. Uh, monkeys on Pudge hmm. would have to be my guess, though. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, it makes the most sense right now with the SF pick. Uh, There's the TB. All right. There's the TB. Very strong pairing with the Shadow Demon. They got that fifth. They got the Luna fourth. And now they get another <laughs> great hero with a Shadow Demon, this time even later in the draft. So we'll have to see if it comes to bite complexity in the ass later because it certainly did last game with that Luna pickup. It eventually did, yeah. To be fair, I mean, earlier on in the game, it seemed like that Timbersaw pickup was working and they were actually fighting it off pretty right. well. But. It eventually became overwhelming, as it naturally does. Now, again, I will say Leshrac, you know, he provides a good amount of AoE. You got the raises from Shadow Fiend. They have good counter push here, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it feels like a Shadow Demon paired up with either Terra Blade or Luna especially. It, it really is just so stupid strong. So it's there, not many teams are willing to give that up. But Complexity is. And here we go. Let me oh, I gotta switch the, the HUD here. There we go. Make sure. All right, we can actually see the game now. All right, so uh, it is, is it monkeys on? Yeah, it is monkeys on the pudge. So he, I will say this too. Now, again, with all that hype, he, he talked with him about it, making himself sound like he's a pretty good pudge player. He loves to play the hero. I'm expecting some live big up to plays. It now, right? Yeah, they, we, he better <laughs> live up to this now. I'm setting this up here. No pressure. None at all. Not many people. Every watching. missed hook, I'm keeping a tally mark. I got my <laughs> notepad right here. Of course, of course. Here we go. Yeah. All right, every hook missed, I'm, I'm keeping a tally. All right, we'll see if it starts with one here. As they're going to smoke on up. Try to get somebody. They they had a chance somewhat on Underlord, but it weren't, didn't get there quick enough. And he falls back. So I think DC playing it pretty pretty safe. Moomeander and we are going to... Oh, they're going to catch Wii. Okay, this should be a kill. I don't see him getting away. A split earth catches. There's the hook and there's the kill. He landed the hook. He's one for one. The hook was necessary there, but all right. He hasn't missed one yet. He's one for one. Easiest hook of his life. Well, that's a big first blood, that's right. though. That's going to get them the rune. Now, it's still going to be a 2-2 two -two rune split. Uh, Soxa will get this one. The I'm curious begins. why they placed the ward there for DC, when you could just walk up a little bit and place it on the big cliff, and it shows you so much more. Doesn't that seem a little odd to you? I, I feel like you could get True. so much more out of it. And if they're going to D-Ward, they're probably going to place a D-Ward somewhere around it anyways. You know? Well, it blocks the camp. I mean, that's the one thing. That oh, True. I assume, yeah, with the, with the off lane punch, he takes it, he can pull the creep it, it wave. Oh, of course. Okay, I'm so stupid. I haven't seen that as much anymore, and it just, it's so, God, it's so useful, isn't it? So, <laughs> nope, no shenanigans for him. No, yeah, they're going to block. Obviously, they know that now. He's pinging it out like, damn it. They, they, they knew what was happening. So, yeah, this, uh, all of a sudden, life just got a little bit more difficult for Pudge. But that's, you got to expect but that I, when you're playing these top tier teams. Yeah, I, uh... I'm interested to see what what his plan is now, though, because he's not going to be, like, contesting this lane. He's not going to be doing weird pulls. And the supports are helping the safe lane. So I'm interested to see how much, like, how effective he is. But for, for now, they're doing some pulls on the side of DC. I think he actually tried to stack it, but he missed it. Soxa, that is. So that's kind of unfortunate. Oh, missed the timing, yeah. So Monkeys is just going to stay close enough to leech as much experience as he can. But obviously Soxa now... <clears throat> being over here will uh, attempt to push him out as much as he can. Now, he knows that he doesn't have rot, actually, so he's going to be fine. Right. As far as trading auto attacks. Oh, he's level two now. Okay, so much for being fine. Metamorphosis, here we go. 
Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Unless he rots himself. Oh, no. Couldn't get it. Socks that times it. So this is what I was talking about. So when you're if when you're not investing, see, I th that's why I was like when I saw that sword, I was like, well, that's still yeah. I I just assumed that they were gonna do some kind of aggro, aggro lane with this. And if your if your whole strategy is I'm just gonna hook the creeps to the side, and then everything's gonna be you know all fine and dandy, and then that gets that, and then you're stifled because of one ward, you gotta rethink your strategy or at least buy some sentries and be ready for that. Yeah. Because now he's got kind of no purpose. Although. They do TP him mid. There's a haste room picked up by Z Freak. We sense something, and he's going to be fine for the time being. Unless he gets caught somewhere else. Maybe a lucky hook. No. I don't know, but we, with his we sense, are just knowing that something's a misery, however. Yeah. Might not be so lucky. Still haste room active here for Z Freak, and that's a dead conga. No chance for him. Raze is going to be coming out. Try to get a kill for Shadow Fiend and cancel. Well, a little bit off with that Raze, but that's the radius. It hits, uh, hits the conga. And he'll secure the kill. So it makes it a two to one game now. Yeah, at least Invoker made his way back, but still picking off a support. It's a good job with the roam, but yeah, we'll continue to watch, see how Monkey's here on this Pudge does recover. They didn't actually spend any resources yet trying to counter ward this uh, can't block Observer Ward. So they uh, yeah. don't really care about it too much in the end, it feels like. Denied. Or enough, at well, least. I wonder to see if. Uh they're gonna go for another kill when this meta is up on the resolution. He didn't. I was expecting him to actually level up the reflection during that last initiation, but he didn't do it. He knew that the Kunkka was around, which means he's gonna go for just like an all pushing, all farming build. Yeah, two zero two two right now. So no points in the reflection. Um, and obviously that synergizes a bit better with the Shadow Demon and the disruption. And your illusions do more damage. Um, it's a little bit better. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, that this pushing is gonna be pretty scary and Pudge. He's great in, in the towards the end game with pushes when you have some core items and levels, the Aetherlands and things like that. But he, like I said, this is just going to be such a slow start for him. Yeah. We'll see. Close to level three now, at least. Yeah, he's in trouble, though. That ping's coming uh -oh. out. There's uh -oh. the combo. Don't think he's missing this torrent. Oh, my God, he missed the torrent. Oh. <laughs> How many times we you see that today? People haven't been running this combo for a while, so they, they're missing the timings, man. <laughs> I don't... Uh... Yeah, that uh, that was a whiff. Well, he just walks away, so no kill there. Monkey's getting a little lucky. We'll see about uh, <laughs> get it again, but doesn't seem like they're gonna get another chance. At least a good one at Maybe. that. Now Rubik is coming up here to defend and help out a little bit. They may be sensing. Yeah, here's the push, signified by. Oh, here we go. Second chance here, misery, and he does hit it this time. Four TP's coming out. Look at the defense here from Rubik, though. Cast the Fade Bolt. Little damage from the Illusions. Melon's casting that Edict onto many, many units, but maybe looking for a stun opening. And they will defend this tower, and that's the important thing. Monkeys, maybe looking for a hook. He's taking lots of auto tech. Yeah. Be oh. careful. Misses the hook. Two for three. <laughs> You're really giving check, aren't you? Yeah. I got it. Almost got I misery got there, but uh, scratching his butt somewhat and not actually landing the hook in the end. So instead, they'll just prevent this tower push from happening. Ooh. Bottom lane. Wait, where was it? That was middle lane, wasn't it? There we go. Camera. Yeah. Solo kill. Look at that, cancel, getting the solo kill, using those raises level 3 currently, so... Fortunately, missing uh, out on that one, but it just seems like he dove him at the tower, essentially. And, uh, catching him, so... That was a big kill for cancel. Seems like he's been outlast hitting quite a bit in the middle lane, too, but you gotta think the roam for that, probably. Oh, the courier! They're gonna stop the courier! No, it's not gonna kill it. <laughs> it's chasing it the whole time. Oh, no, Soxa ran into a creep, which kind of slowed his movement a little bit. Soxa... It's in a lot of trouble right now. Edict coming out as one dead Shadow Demon. And a Shadow Fiend, actually, as Shadow Fiend gets taken out by a solo kill from Wii, which is quite impressive considering the fact that he was 0 and 2. That's very impressive. Rubik trying to go for a lift. Has a little bit of damage. No sentries, though. So Wii is just going to be fine. So that, that's always more impressive when you get the kill later. Like when someone starts to snowball with one or two kills and then you kill them afterwards. Yeah. Well, the thought misery. Trying to juke and jive. Monkeys, he's got the hook ready. No TP available, even if he had it. That rod this is looks up. like it's going to be an easy oh, kill. There's easy. He's like, oh, I want this bounty rune real quickly. Okay, fix it up. There's the rot once again. And that is a dead misery. Hopefully not the neutrals for their sake. Yeah, they do kill him before he gets there. And well played. Middle lane, we again could be in some trouble. Leshrac in the flank. The raises land. Here comes the Diabolic Edict. The split earth. He's going to dodge that at least, but with the Edict. No, he's that not going to. He actually didn't even use the Edict attack. in the end. Wow. I'm surprised. Maybe it's just simply too far away. Figured it wasn't going to be enough. It, 
It slightly slowers your movement. It kind of stutters your movement a little bit. He was more focused on actually getting the stun. Okay. But unfortunately, we was just a little bit too fast. Was uh, I think he activated Wex for like I don't know maybe eight more movement speed. But it was enough to give him a little bit of a dodge right there. Sidestep. Cancel gets the last hit on the tower. Nonetheless, they're they're making more of this. They do lose the tower up, to, or they're about to lose the tower up top unless they do something. Um. Yeah, this is gonna die pretty fast with the glyph already being popped. Metamorphosis, the illusions, and Sia Tower. So, yeah, complexity fine with the trade in the end. It's inevitably going to happen as we were talking about. Underlord bottom lane. Find himself in a curious spot here as we see Rubik rotating over. Look at Moo, by the way. The triple Sage's Mask on him, working into that Orchid. Pick up eventually a Moo Meander. He is dead. Well, Searing Arrows, a strafe activated, and obviously Rubik assistance. Easy kill onto the Underlord. What that equals. Rubik's having a good game, very close to level 6 right now. Tons of fun spells to steal. Obviously, the uh, Kunkka's arsenal of spells is really strong. Resolution in some trouble. No Sunder available. A couple of auto attacks. <laughs> auto attacks don't do too much because he got high armor, but he does clip him at the very end with that final C raise. Easy kill. Nice kill on the resolution there from Cancel. Yeah, that's a big one, too. Obviously, slowing down Terra Blade. And yeah, I got the net worth up now. And you see the top two in favor of complexity here. Now, move Meander. Gonna be run down, lift once again. You see Monkey sitting right on top. No dismember yet, but not even necessary. Monkey's gets credit for the kills, a hook in the face. He really wants to make sure to secure these kills. Doesn't have fleshy by there, of course, not ending up charges on that, but still. Point is, they're getting the kill. Eight to two lead here. I mean, you look at the makeup of complexity. This is a team that wants to kill early, and they're accomplishing that at eight minutes into the game right now. Kind of a similar start to their last game. That was Monkey's. He sees Soxa. No ulti, though, unfortunately, as he's only level four. Um, and he's just gonna get disrupted and Soxa will be fine for the moment. See if he's maybe trying to find some kind of opening here. Monkeys, can he get the rod tonight? Can he get the rod tonight? He can. I think he actually takes extra damage from the rod because of the Shadow Demon's uh, Soul Catcher, spell. yeah. Z Freak, yeah, Soul Catcher. As uh, speaking of Soul Catcher, Z Freak steals that, tries to skirt on out of there, and I think he will be fine. Yeah, Moo is nearby, of course. Meanwhile, there's another kill happening elsewhere as it looks like at the top lane, he does take out Shadow Fiend over there. Back to the bottom lane, though, Sunstrike coming out. Oh, Z-Freak's gonna dodge it. He was aware that something might have been happening. Does steal another base, does a Firestorm, actually. Moo Meander in trouble to this Pudge. Decaying or rotting him down right there. Will secure the kill. Moo on that Clink. Soxa, can he escape? No, he can't. The rot is too much, and Misery's also in trouble. He, too, goes down the hook and a whip, but that's because the target died right before he used it, so... In the end, works out for Complexity yet again. They got the three kills down here. They did lose Shadow Fiend at the top, but as we mentioned, can cancel Shadow Fiend. He'll be fine. Well, Monkeys is proving his worth this game in terms of that, that Pudge pick. I mean, he is all over the map. He abandoned top, but he's found openings mid. He's found openings around their, uh, their bottom shrine. Just everywhere. They do get the tower kill on bottom. Melons will pay with his life for it. Doing a lot of good damage there to TP, though. Jeez. Doing actually a lot of good damage to TP. He's become dangerously close. He does have Sunder now, but he actually used it, I think, over the top lane, which contributed to that double kill that we got onto Less Track and the Shadow Fiend. So despite that that bad start in that first blood onto Weeha, uh, he's recovered very, very nicely, and he's closing in on his Midas. Had a good time. Yeah. Uh, that was close right there. They were trying to rotate around, maybe catch the Terrorblade if he's trying to fall back, but they used the Shrine instead, and they're going to go right into the bottom lane, of course. So... Soxa going to put him under once again, create some more illusions here. You see Moo in the background. Oh, the Courier's here, delivering that Ogre Club. He gets it in time. Oh, X marks the spot, going to bring back Pudge. The Sun Strike on top, and Monkeys will fall in the end. Clink's deciding not to open, just a little bit too dangerous of a spot. Instead, he'll use his Death Pact on the Centaur off to the side and continue to farm. So, But they do enough to hold that. that that ended up working out really well because the meta was only lasting for like another two more seconds after that engagement. Did not, if, had he not had that meta up there, I don't think he get, gets that kill at all under that punch. There is an Uberlord ult coming up for the top. <laughs> Give him a nice taxi service up to the top lane to help defend and farm. <laughs> they do know that Leshrac's up here. I, he has to have known that that happened, right? Maybe he didn't look or see or care. Or care. Care to give any notice to it. <laughs> or, or, or just care. I mean, he's, he's Leshrac, damn it. He's got that Diabolic oh. Edict. Dyer's Bit of Malice missing, yeah. Misery still wants to get it, but no, nah, they can't get him. He's just too quick. Leshrac having the innate fast movement speed. In fact, they're going to go smoke. You look for a kill. Monkeys, he's, he's still not attack. level 6, so despite his great start, he's getting very, very... He's getting uh, slow leveling in this punch. Oh! Does get the hook. Very nicely done. And a quick stun here from Melon. And there's his level 6. 
Yeah, that was a blind hook. I was double checking. That was simply him uh, seeing him go there initially and hope that he was in the right spot. So that was definitely one of the better ones sort so of far. Blind. Sort of blind. Yeah, he saw the initially, <laughs> but when he actually hit the hook, it was technically blind. Middle lane, they're trying to go for Wii, but obviously not going to happen. He's playing a little too safe, and uh, once again, he'll be fine. So you mentioned Wii. He does have the Hannah Midas now working on that, on that Yules next. Not the takeoff game from the Evoker necessarily, but it's, it's obviously been a struggle as uh, he's been locked down somewhat. How's Terrorblade doing, by the way? He's got the Dragon Lance, Yasha into that Manta on the way. So pretty typical build onto him coming. Yeah, up. very, very ty typical Mind build. Um, the Orkint coming in very, very quickly here for Klinks. He'll have that in uh, about another 30 seconds to a minute. Obviously, you want to start fighting as soon as you get that. Uh, that's when your power spike really starts to spike up there. I hear a sun strike somewhere. I think it's just more of a vision sun strike, if anything. Cancel. He's going to go for a blink after this Dragon Lance. So oh! Terrorblade's in trouble, by the way. The dismember onto him. You see the Diabolic hit at the ulti as well. That just takes down Terrorblade. Oh, so quickly, it felt like. And the team could not react in time. So, talk about the perfect target to find by himself. They do that now. Complexion needs to be careful not to overstay their, their welcome right here. You see Leshrac going to be put under. But the mouse will catch monkeys off to the side. Out comes the ship, and down goes Leshrac. Shadowfiend from a distance. They're somewhat spread up, though. It's complexity. And Terrible is going to be back up in 10 seconds. X marks the spot, brings back Cancel. No really follow up, though. Misery couldn't get the torrent off in time. He's got another X soon. Oh, Dark uh, Rift away from Moon Meander, but he's going to die. Oh, the hook was just oh. behind him. Almost got him. Requiem going to be canceled right there by the disruption. And we're still going on. Out comes the dismember. There's the Requiem of Souls. And down goes Wee. Down goes Misery. And Soxa going to be the third to follow. Moo being here as well, helping big time. And complexity, a three for nothing exchange. At the end of that fight, at least. Yeah, unfortunately, DC is just not ready to take these full engagements. They're really close to that mech, and they really desperately need it. Dyer's top um, is under attack. Yeah, they just, uh, Invoker just wasn't able to be in the right place at the right time. It's very, very good heads up there play from Complexity. That ultimate from Shadowfiend just does a lot of damage too, and he was able to channel it off. The Orchid came off onto the or uh, onto the Orchid, onto the uh, Invoker at the right time. So uh, even if it didn't kill him initially, the extra damage would have. I didn't realize he had that going into that fight. I don't think DC would have as well, <laughs> the way that they were trying to right. make the fight happen. So yeah, the timing definitely there. and. That's uh, very big for complexity, obviously. Uh, you see Clink's up there. Shadowfiend slightly ahead of him, probably expected, but Clink's right behind. They're both pretty far ahead of the Terrorblade. Who's that third in line? Who do they catch here? That's Pudge. Oh, that's a kill. Sunstrike. It's a little bit of revenge at least, but still complexity moving at the top lane, and here comes that level four Diabolic Edict. Now comes yeah, and the Searing Arrows from... And the Searing Arrows, but yeah, they're going to glyph and be fine. Wii is closing in on that Yules. Has it very, very shortly, about 600 gold. Um, that's going to be really good against Clinks because he's hard to catch sometimes. If if it's not Conqueror or SD, there's not really anyone else that can catch him. Oh, Underlord, he does have the mech. This might be a good time for DC to fight. But look at that pop AOE up, damage. Out comes a ship, though. Clinks will fall and now us track the target. He does go down. Yeah, between the mech, the aura as well as the ship there was no way that complexity was killing those guys with what they had right there yep now they want to start fighting they have the mech on the underlord uh he's actually not going to use that shrine right there wants to maybe save it for someone else but cancel he's gonna he actually didn't go for the blink he went for the yasha instead still has that blink queued up I'm interested to see if that's what he wants to go back for what's what's z freak doing right here he's got a ghost ship yeah does he want to maybe get some kind of kill up here i'm not quite sure uh, Satyr's coming up here with the Helm of the Dominator. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's trying to go for a solo kill? No, he just he knows that he can't cancel his TP, so. Okay. That was a little ambitious. And Rubik actually, speaking of supports that get Helm of the Dominator, Rubik actually has a Helm of the Dominator. I saw him run over there with that Purge Creep and Purge TP. I'm like, whose is that? Yeah. And lo and behold, it's Z-Freaks. That was. I, that's not your typical Rubik item, I feel like, but... I guess with nobody else being a prime candidate for it on this team, they figure it makes sense to get it on him at least. So, uh, why not? Leshrac. It's just so yeah. useful for your team to have at least one. The, the attack speed aura, the, the HP aura, the good stats it provides, and of course the creep that you get. It's just such a powerhouse item. So it is, yeah. Totally warranted item pickup here for Z-Freak. 
Leshrak is working on that Urn of Shadows. He's level 10, so has the extra 125 life, is what Melons chose to get there. You mentioned uh, the mech, though, on Underlord, and now the Guardian Greaves is coming in the near future for him. Misery trying to finish his own Helm of the Dominator for his team here. I guess nobody else has picked it up or is planning to pick it up, so yeah, it's going to be another case of Oh, sport. sun hits. Oh, Underlord is in trouble. Dark Rift trying to get out of here. Monkeys, can he maybe hook and kill? No, it's not going to hit even. And he does get away, but here comes more. The Sunstrike actually was early, I believe. Melon survives initially, but he does go down shortly after. And now Monkey's on the run. TP out. He'll be good. So all they lost was Leshrac, actually. Yeah, and the TP out from Moon. It's fine. He, kno he knew he could just regular TP out there because it would have been canceled by a plethora of stuns or what have you. But he TPs out, ended up being just fine. Able to evade the hook. I think even if the hook hit, he would have had enough life after the mech. But here we go, TB in with a stolen boat. Oh, that's a big combo right there. Mimo dismembered the background, catches Misery locking him down. They do pick off Endalore, down goes Konka and El Soxa on the run. Disruption up in five seconds, he's gonna go for the quick TP. And he will be good, actually. The hook just a second late right there on catching him. Klinks is still chasing. Maybe they pick off this Terror Blade. Oh, they can see him though because of the sentry. But yeah, he's gonna catch him right here. Is it gonna be enough damage for the kill? Has a strafe, Searing Edo. He's not going for it. Okay. I'm really surprised. I I think he easily could have killed him. I he had his know. ult still active. He had Orchid up. Dying he had strafe. I'm very surprised he didn't attack. at least try for it. Yeah. I and mean, what's the worst that could happen? Anyway, uh, they still get a very very positive engagement right there. They're taking a tier two after that, so they're taking objectives after kills, which is always good, obviously. But that Rubik, man, stealing that. Oh, he's gonna go and find a Shadow Demon. Prime candidate, but not gonna kill him just in time. Now he's in trouble, actually. No, nice four staff right there. Ship gonna miss as well. Big oh, hook oh, oh, oh. on the socks. I mean, well, a little angle from Monkeys. That was not an easy angle. As he runs all the way up there and manages to snipe him out. And now the middle tower push, so. Overall complexity continuing with the momentum here. Hurricane Pike, by the way, finished on Shadow Fiend. Radiance top tower is under attack. As well as the Yasha. Yeah, very, very large and in charge right now. Yeah, it could have been very scary for Clinks, but was able to be fine. And yeah, like you said, very weird angle, but Monkey's able to find it. So he, he's really backing up. He's he talked the talk. It's certainly walking the walk right now. He is. It's uh, it is fun to see, but not so fun for DC as uh, it is hurting them now. Obviously, there's still plenty left in this game, but a Roshan kill and okay, cancels the one that picked it up. Actually, I'm curious, what do you think about that? Uh, Shadow Fiend over Clinks for the uh, Aegis. I think it's fine because usually if Clinks dies, it's going to happen super fast and you're not going to get any other spells out of him. But when Shadow Fiend dies, you're going to go out with the bang. You're going to be auto attacking, you're going to be raising, trying to get an ult off. And then, of course, when you finally die, you get your actual ult off. But um, yeah, I think this is fine. It's probably a better choice. Okay. <clears throat> top tower push. There are going to be all five here. Leshrak again. Oh, well, he's not on the tower, actually. Leshrak's scouting onto the front lines. He does finish the urn. Wants to get that vision down, though, but it doesn't seem like Digital Chaos is concerned about defending here up top. They're going to let it fall, pretty much knowing that uh, maybe their team fight isn't as strong right now. Bottom tower and there we go. So, top tower Will they defend the Siege? I assume so. I don't know if they can. They might try, but I don't know if they can. Tons of damage Shades coming out from Edict. Tons of damage coming oh. out from everything. Hook coming out successful onto Wii. He's gonna cast some spells. Here we go, Breaking. Requiem of Souls being activated. Now, not the closest Wii is caught, though. Wii's dead for 50 seconds. He does have a buyback. Will he use it's the question? X marks the spot, brings it back. The ship is not gonna hit anyone. Z Freak stole a torrent himself. Meanwhile, Cancel going toe to toe with Moomy Hitter. He gets hooked back. Now, the Aegis was popped, though, in mid hook. So he's kind of at an awkward angle right here. Sunstrike gonna be used immediately. But not really doing the most damage. They do pick up the tower, and again, that Diabolic Edict, the ulti activate of the Pulse Nova from Lesha. This is a support hero that could deal so much damage. Siege in the base, and that's going to be a Rax destroyed in favor of Complexity. Melons going to be pulled back in on top of the Ice Bath. He says, screw it, I'm dead. Just leave me. Damage done. Look at the bottom lane, though. Terror Blade, that's why. He was split pushing. Now Moose here trying to catch him with the Orchid, but another TP coming in from Wii. And enough to scare them off right there. Oh, actually. Z Freak! Oh, they actually got him. Wow. <laughs> they actually got terribly. He sniped him out. He came back with a little sneaky Z Freak as he blinks and gets him with the Fate Bolt. Easy kill under the Terror Blade. Nicely done. Z Freak with a box score of 2 0 and 15, having a game, man. Wow. Stealing all the, all the right spells, all the right times. Stole Ice Wall there at the end, too, as Invoker makes his exit. 
Moo trying to still chase him. In the meantime, Monkey says die, but DC, uh, we, one auto attack, two oh. auto attacks with the Orca damage, he is dead. And a very, very nice find there for Moo. Good heads up play. I see it. His box score is 5, 1, and 7. Great game so far from Complexity. Back out of there with the minimal losses, only with the with the less wreck, and of course, subsequently, the uh, the Pudge. I don't know how he really died, but they get a huge uh, win in that last engagement. Yeah, and Invoker did use a buyback to reiterate, too, so he actually doesn't have a buyback now for the next 40 seconds here, and obviously, oh, wow. for the next about five and a half minutes, even, he will not have one, so... That also pretty crucial for DC's chances now in the next five minutes or and so. And the farm is just not there on the non-cores of DC. And even on the cores, I mean, we typically haven't always just great games on the Invoker. It's very, very under-farmed. Same thing with TP, but you look at the supporting cast. I mean, the supports are on the bottom. Even uh, Moon Meander on his on his pit lord almost has less farm than every single member of complexity now a little bit of that has to do with just the structural damage and when you when you get racks killed you get a lot of gold actually hold on thought move being chased around there are sentries down <laughs> he's juking he's actually walked though. back into a sentry the team's here let's see if they can help yeah they are here can they survive with moon no yes maybe oh split earth comes down moon's gonna be alive for the time being he's looking to get his chance now wrecking the souls in the background moon meander so screw it the uber out can he make it happen yes no he cannot what? he got pulled back actually was that a rubik x marks the spot it absolutely was he stole it and he used it the z freak godlike rubik continues gets the kill on a shadow demon Kunkka gonna be able to dodge that hook right there at least, but the lift gonna make it, nah, uh, uh you ain't going anywhere, bitch. They get the kill anyways with that lift of Rubik yet again. Buy back on a Shadow uh, Demon, that is. They know how important it is to hold right here. We gonna do his best, the meatball comes out. The double four staff on a monkey's right there, a little bit awkward, but Moo is still good to go. He's actually full life just about and nearly full oh, mana. Did he actually hit it? Oh my God, he did. The Desolator goes off and there's the kill on a Wii. No buyback, his complexion, he just done it against Digital Chaos, about to take game number two and finish in a split right here. Wow. All right, man. This guy has proved his worth on Pudge and maybe warrants a band in future series. And all I thought is not over just yet. Finally taking the last set of racks. Hook, unfortunately, onto an illusion as he just popped a mint, or just the illusions were about to fade. Four staff in, trying to ulti disruption to save here from Soxa. Taking some damage. Cancel just doesn't care. He's looking about all business here, trying to hit those racks. Monkeys does fall. Unfortunately, most of his focus was on the melee rack, so that will reach in. But the damage is done as another set of racks in the bottom lane falls. And I don't know whether to call Monkeys MVP or just the entire team of complexity, but they look <laughs> so much better in this second game than, than last game. And they didn't even look that bad last game. It, it, something happened in the middle of that yeah. game where Moon had some, some clutch RPs. But this game, they're just banging on all cylinders and seem to be all on the same page. Oh, Barry hits a play. I don't know if he did that on purpose, but he meant it to maybe mitigate a potential sun strike <laughs> from Wii just then. Cancel. And it didn't actually hit him, but if it did, it would have spread out among three units instead of one, saving his life. So Barry heads up play from Cancel. Again, I can't stress it enough, but they're just banging on all cylinders, man. Yeah, they really are. It's Obviously, it feels like there's definitely several reasons to it here for complexity success here at game number two. No doubt the hooks of uh, Pudge living up to the... The hype, but obviously Z Freak Rubik, I think no doubt he's had some clutch plays, including that last fight that the Xbox has fought to pull back. A couple of the ghost ship steals. What does he have now? He has a pit of malice, actually, so another crowd control ability. Yeah, and the cores of D DC, on the other hand, Terra Blade, he, he just really has not been too threatening. I mean, 25 minutes in, a Mantis style Dragon Lance, it's all right, but is that really concerning for complexity? I mean, with the split push, sure, but oh, the hook just missing Underlord right there, meanwhile as uh, Pudge was attempting to make another big play. But, yeah, Complexity going to go cutthroat right here, trying to really finish the game. Now, they do not have an Aegis or anything like that. Roshan should be up in the near future. They're not going to wait, though. They want to finish this game now, perhaps. And they're going to smoke up and go for an attempt. Obviously, that's that's a fake right there. They're just going to let it run on by, see if anyone else pokes out a little bit. I think and the damage output... Now from Shadow Fiend with the extra two damage per soul. He has the Ags, boosted of Requiem, 46 extra souls. That's 184 bonus damage. Oh, he's 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 in a good spot right now. He's feeling pretty confident. Hook attempt coming out. <laughs> Successful on the Wii yet again. Orchid, he's dead. No buyback. Soxa not in the right place. He actually already used a disruption, I think, on TV Illusions or something. Monkey's just proving again and again that he should be drafted uh, this fudge every single game. 
Oh my god, another kill. You see the buyback on Underlord. Another kill though for Cancel comes out. Meanwhile, the siege continues, and this absolutely could be it in favor of Complexity. The Requiem going off right there. You see the Ags effect as well from the Shadow Fiend. Resolution sitting from a distance in the Metamorphosis. He is just simply trying to live and run back, but GG being called Complexity. Gonna take game number two and uh, split the series with Digital Chaos. They, they gotta feel hyped about that. And again, definitely looking good. It's not like this was a fluke, in my opinion, at least. This was uh, this was just solid play, some unique stuff going on, and and then there's the top of it. I mean, they got their Leshrac. I mean, not that Mel has over took over the game by any means, but Leshrac is right. a comfortable hero for them but clearly. It did synergize well with their kind of the ways to take down towers. Like they would mow down heroes, they would find good ganks specifically with monkeys and Z Freak. I mean, they found openings on ganks that were that that took me by surprise, and we're the ones that have you know like map hack. Like we can see everything. And even I was still taken by surprise about where they were finding their angles about where to gank. That one smoke gank on the Terror Blade really started to set the tone, as you saw. I think it was the tail end of the smoke. It was melons and monkeys, and they they like you said they found that TB in the jungle, and that started to set the pace. Monkeys I think got some good levels in farm right after that, and started to snowball. But man, th this was a really exciting game too, and it was really fun to see this different draft, but see it work and to see monkeys. As you said, he said he's quite a punch player, and he proved that today. Yeah. No, that was fun to watch. And uh, But for DC, obviously, they got to feel a little upset about that one at the same time, maybe. Uh, not realizing perhaps something like the punch pick. I mean, it caught them off guard, but uh, clearly, again, complexity deserving of the victory and splitting the series. So, in a sense, I feel like if you're complexity especially, you're happy with that result. You know, obviously, 2 nothing always going to be better, but knowing the matchup and everything, you got to be at least satisfied that you took a game off of arguably the team that everyone is expecting to have to beat here in the American qualifiers. I mean, they are the favorites, no doubt, uh, that being Digital Chaos. So things are uh, going to continue on, though. Still plenty, plenty more matches to be played, like I said, and it's still uh, early on in the sense, almost halfway somewhat, but a lot of matches to be played, and it could be anyone's, uh, anyone's qualifying from the American region, it feels like. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this series, but we do got one more series now lined up of what is going to be Team Freedom versus Dialcom will be our final series set to happen, and that's set to happen in about 45 minutes from now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, with the default time. So uh, we'll have a little bit of a break here. Obviously, the stream will stay on, though, and everything. with some rad music for you guys. But uh, we'll be coming back with our next and final series of, again, Dialcom versus Team Freedom. Should be a good finish here. So once again, guys, I'm Bricky CBK, joined by Tralf here. Tuning into the Starladder I League Star Series American Qualifiers. Stay tuned, guys. We got one more series to go.